It barely seems like 2022 has gotten started, and yet we're fast approaching the year's midpoint. Before we know it, summer blockbuster season will be over and the awards circus will be in full swing. Such is the relentless march of time. So to mark off this momentous occasion then, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are the 10 best movies of 2022 so far. Number 10, Jackass Forever. It's easy to see how a 2022 Jackass movie could have gone so horribly wrong. I mean, the world has changed a lot since 2010's Jackass 3D, and there was sure potential for middle-aged men brutalizing themselves to seem both sad and played out. But Jackass has always been about the disarmingly wholesome camaraderie between its focal group of fools, and Jackass Forever shrewdly mines the audience's fondness for these personalities for all it's worth. Rather than a soulless, nostalgic cash-in, there's a genuine passion fueling Jackass Forever, evident in it producing some of the funniest stunts of the entire series. The returning staples get the punishment you want to see, while newcomers, including the hilarious Dark Shark, a man who has been shot nine times yet is terrified of birds, inject the same youthful vigor that made the original series so tantalizing. It's just a great, great absurd time. Jackass Forever relishes deconstructing mainstream cinema's odd aversion to male nudity as well by including on-screen penises at every possible opportunity, the results of which are both hilarious and, more often than not, just a little bit wince-inducing. Also, while you're on, be sure to check out Jackass 4.5 on Netflix. It's a feature-length companion comprised of deleted scenes, interviews, and behind-the-scenes footage that will make you appreciate the main movie even more. Number 9, RRR. If you haven't seen RRR, then just stop what you're doing right now, load up Netflix, and just watch it. In fairness, I can see why you might not have done that already. I mean, this Indian action epic clocks in at a beefy 187 minutes, so you'll actually need to block out a decent portion of your day to sit through it, but still, it's well worth it. The internet is currently going nuts for this flick, and it's easy to see why. Anyone tired of the MCU's approach to action should find RRR to be a thrilling breath of fresh air. A knowingly over-the-top, shamelessly melodramatic hybrid of action, drama, romance, and musical genres that effortlessly barrels through that lengthy runtime. Between its ludicrous fight scenes, energetic songs, and passionate performances from a charming cast, this movie is a persuasive argument for cinema as pure bombastic entertainment. Just give it all the Oscars, please. Number 8, After Yang. One of the most affecting and thoughtful films of the year, After Yang is a superb second feature that totally eschews genre conventions. A sci-fi drama about a family's reaction to their robotic child malfunctioning, After Yang is about the furthest thing possible from a typical sci-fi film about humanoid robots. There's no action to speak of here, but simply a low-key examination of what makes us human, filtered through the perspectives and memories of a non-human entity. Colin Farrell leads a terrific cast, including Jodie Turner-Smith, Justin H. Min, and Haley Lou Richardson in a film that defies easy categorization and is absolutely best watched while knowing as little as possible. That said, I will say that it probably does boast the best opening credit sequence of any movie this year so far, so look forward to that. Number seven, Turning Red. If Turning Red doesn't quite rank among Pixar's very best efforts, it's still another strong offering from Disney's premier animated stable, melding eye-popping animation with some agreeably forward-thinking themes. Though it might be hard to come to terms with, enough time has passed that the early 2000s nostalgia is now a thing. I know, do you feel old yet? And Turning Red has great fun mining that time period for every drop of comedy that it's worth. And while its notions of self-actualization will seem familiar enough to anyone who's seen more than a few Disney movies, the script's exploration of real teen experiences, namely menstruation and teenage sexuality, confirms that Pixar is continuing to grow and mature. It kind of flew under the radar when it first launched, but don't let it get drowned out by the Disney Plus content factory. Number 6. The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent 
To the surprise of just about everybody, the Nicolas Cage meme movie actually turned out to be a genuinely great piece of work in its own right. A playful, restless riff on both cliched action movies and especially Mr. Cage's own illustrious life and career, the unbearable weight of massive talent is the unlikely climax of a decade's worth of Cage memes, both poking fun at and playing loving tribute to one of our finest performers. It goes without saying that Cage is absolutely on fire in this movie, though he is matched in every sense by a terrifically entertaining Pedro Pascal, and the pair's palpable on-screen chemistry makes this one of the most memorable buddy cop flicks of the last few years. As a celebration of the man's everything that also manages to be a thoroughly enjoyable movie in its own right, this is far more of a success than it really had any right to be. Number 5. Boiling Point Potentially the least recognizable movie on this list, you absolutely should not sleep on Boiling Point. In 90 minute one shot two of the force, this uncut gems style drama follows one particularly hectic night in a high class restaurant. Anchored by a stirring, heartbreaking performance from the always great Stephen Graham, who plays a head chef whose personal life is falling apart before his very eyes, this glimpse into the stresses of the service and food industry will be one of the tensest movies you ever see that doesn't feature any fight scenes. Now, one-shot movies are nothing new, but the gimmick gets a new lease of life here, never missing a beat to get you in the pressure cooker of the situation. As our team of likably flawed characters attempt to navigate fractured relationships, out-of-touch managers, and knobhead customers on the busiest night of the year, sparks begin to fly. It's a no-frills affair and pretty low stakes in the grand scheme of things, but Boiling Point is a tight, effective, and affecting flick from beginning to end. So yeah, carve out an hour and a half and give it a go, just probably not if you've just come off a difficult shift serving the public yourself. Number four, The Northman. The most metal movie of the year, and possibly of any year, is Robert Eggers' peerless Viking epic, The Northman. The director's eye for visual atmosphere once again serves him well in this luscious $90 million acid trip of a movie. Aided by a crackerjack cast, including Alexander Skarsgård, Nicole Kidman, Anya Taylor-Joy, Ethan Hawke, Willem Dafoe, and yes, Bjork. This deceptively simple revenge story gives way to a few more twists and turns than you might initially expect, even if its singularly unconventional style obviously won't be for anyone hoping for a mega-budget version of, like, the hit TV show Vikings or something. There are a few compromises here and there where you can kind of tell Eggers may have had to bow to a studio note or two, especially when it comes to the runtime, but they are ultimately minor issues and shouldn't detract from his ability to deliver a eye-wateringly beautiful, ultra-immersive thriller that has the good sense to show you two naked men fighting on a volcano. I mean, come on, what more could you possibly want? Number three, Top Gun Maverick. There were so, so many ways for a 36 years later Top Gun sequel to fall flat, as so many desperate, pandering legacy sequels have. So, what a pleasant surprise it was that Top Gun Maverick wasn't simply a solid follow-up to the classic 1986 cheeseball action drama, but a legitimately great movie in its own right. Smoking the original film in basically every possible way, Maverick is an astonishing technical showcase for director Joseph Kaczynski that's backed by a surprisingly charming and nuanced script. Digging deeper into the character of Maverick than the original ever even dared to, this is a film that treats its focal pilots as honest-to-god human beings rather than mere props to deliver those delirious set pieces. Speaking of which, those delirious set pieces, my god, that's just mwah, it's cinema. Seriously, don't be surprised if Maverick ends up delivering the most breathlessly entertaining action of the whole year, because Kaczynski and his team have set the bar incredibly high, of course aided by Tom Cruise's clearly insane dedication to the part that few other films are likely to match. Nobody could have seen it coming to this extent, but it's true. A freaking Top Gun sequel is one of the year's very best films, and it probably won't be shifting out of the top 10 come December. 
Number two, everything, everywhere, all at once. Multiverse movies are all the rage right now, and while the MCU has undeniably cornered the market on mega-budget multiversal stories, everything everywhere all at once proves the greater creativity possible on a smaller budget without the restrictions of a cinematic universe the story has to be tied to. Somehow produced for a mere $25 million, this dizzying, absurdist sci-fi comedy is one of the most inventive and unexpectedly heartfelt Hollywood creations of the last few years. Led by an Oscar-worthy Michelle Yeoh as the embattled universe-hopping protagonist Evelyn, this is a monumental achievement purely for managing to weave a multiverse story that's completely bananas and yet makes total sense with a full-hearted emotional core. You've seriously never seen a movie like this before, and hopefully it'll resonate enough with the mainstream to sustain momentum into 2023's awards season. Quite frankly, if you sat through the second half of this movie with dry eyes, well, you're made of sterner stuff than I am, because I caused a genuine scene in my theater. Number one, The Batman. Just barely nudging out everything everywhere all at once, though certainly a lot less likely to caught any serious Oscar buzz, is Matt Reeves' masterful The Batman. Stripping the character down to his basic parts while delivering a leaner, weirder take on the Dark Knight, the Batman is a tremendously refreshing superhero epic that mostly earns its expansive 176-minute runtime, though admittedly it probably could have been trimmed just a tad. Robert Pattinson was a shrewd casting choice to play this grungy oddball version of Bruce Wayne and wiry iteration of Batman. While the supporting cast is filled out with terrific work from Zoe Kravitz, Paul Dano, Jeffrey Wright, John Turturro, Andy Serkis, and of course, Colin Farrell. With its ambitiously dark narrative and mesmerizing visual palette, this is a welcome tonic for everyone feeling slightly exhausted by the MCU's more family-friendly, visually holistic brand of comic book movie. And yeah, I know I've just poo-pooed the MCU twice in this list, but seriously, I don't hate the MCU. It's still really good, just they haven't made a top 10 movie this year so far. Let's hope that changes. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. What do you think are the best movies released so far? And which ones do I need to check out so that you get a chance of making the end of year list? While you're down there as well, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you soon.